Welcome back to the infamous project. Here we are with the 1993 electric current red former little race car, the 11 second notch naturally aspirated that hasn't run in over 20 years, right? So if you guys haven't watched the first video on this car where I go through all of the car kind of inside and out, including the documentation, even its racing history at racetracks all over the US and the time slips and everything else. This is a pretty neat car. So this video's objective is going to be trying to see if we can get this thing to fire up and it has not run in over 20 years and it's going to require some oil, new filter. It's got a, uh, it's got a deep sump pan. So I got uh, 10 quarts of oil, probably pour in, I don't know, eight. And um, I got myself some fuel here. Uh, we need to drain out the fuel tank. We're gonna have to get air in that slick. Um, but yeah, I think I'll change the oil here. We'll drain out the fuel tank. We're gonna get that done. Uh, once we got oil in the motor, uh, we got to check for power. Um, so we'll hook a, um, a booster pack up to things, make sure that everything is turning on, doing what it should, see if we have spark and go from there. To be honest, I'm a little concerned about all these old MSD electronics in here that you guys would have seen in the first video. All right, so we've got all the old stuff here, distribution block hiding down there. We got more electronics hiding up here, switches that I don't know what they do, so on and so forth. So stick around. Let's see if we get this old little race car to fire up. about to drain the old fuel out of this thing. I need some fuel for myself. Oh, that's good. Still Easter Sunday, so I'm allowed to be drinking in the afternoon. Here's our sumped fuel tank, filter, pump, all right, and this is actually still on the factory wiring, so that's good to know. Probably help us diagnose things to see what's going where, but uh, let's not waste any time here. Now, being a race car, all right, I would think it's not like you're running a full tank of fuel. Holy. Okay, we're gonna need something uh, a little bit more aggressive on there. dry look at that probably safe to say that this tank is no good and that is a smell that I have never smelt maybe that's like the smell of race fuel after 20 odd some years safe to say that's going to be probably no good might even be safe to say well oh look at this That looked like an old drip of fuel. Now it could have been a drip of sealant, but it's almost like caramelized. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna take this line off and we're gonna see what it looks like. Oh, 
What a smell. Okay, that looks fine. Okay, it's not full of stuff. That's good. Let's give you guys a closer look at the bottom of the tank here. Holy, it's solid. There's no saving that. Oh, nasty. So I'm curious to know if anything will actually flow through this. So let's spray some brake clean. And it is not coming out the other side of the filter. So I am confident this is completely or very close to full blockage. Fully crystallized fuel. Never seen that before. So here is what's in the tank and the lines. And it's not, um, like maybe that is the color of rust mixed with the fuel, but it's completely crystallized. And it doesn't smell like old ancient fuel. It has a different odor to it. I almost want to say it's not as bad as old fuel. It's still bad, but it's not as bad. And again, give you guys a good look of what that looks like. So I guess the main question would be, is the pump still good? Because I do believe, yeah, like things seem to be okay in there. And the tank, the pump would have drained back. So I can always um, take a line. I have some, that's probably what a dash 10. Yeah, this would be dash 10. This is dash eight. I can actually unthread this. I can get, I have some dash eight stuff at the shop. And um, yeah, maybe what we need to do is just run this thing off like a, a jerry can in the trunk or something temporarily. Okay guys, so definitely um, if the fuel is that bad in the tank, I'd be very concerned about what it's like in the carburetor. Um, like unless it's drained out, I don't know if we'd be that lucky. Um, I guess these would be your indicator for the bowls, right? Like maybe I'm gonna take I'm going to take a few things off here. I'm just curious because like if the carburetor is gummed up full of stuff, like there's going to be no even trying to use that. Okay, so let's see here. There is coolant which is good because when I was looking at the carburetor, I noticed the block off on the thermostat housing here. You can see that's all cracked. So definitely if this car is gonna see any amount of runtime, need to clean that up. Everything looked generally okay. In these lines, I've left the main off the fuel pressure regulator. So I wanna blow that out with compressed air. I am still concerned if there is any fuel left in the bowls. Like, again, a carburetor that sat for this long is not a happy carburetor, but you never know. So that's looking okay. The car's jacked up, and I can actually tell how lightweight this car is just by how much effort I needed to put on that jack to jack up the front of the car. And even though that it looks like a full 
weighted fox body from the outside, you can tell that it is definitely not the case. So I've got it up now and you can see there's one drain plug there that I need to get to for the front sump of the pan. And then there's the main one down in the back. So gonna drain both those guys out. We're gonna see what the oil looks like, get new oil in the car before we start messing around trying to crank things over. And the reality is the oil is probably fine. I bet you they probably change the oil after every single race, but the oil has been sitting for over 20 years. So let's get this old stuff out and new stuff in. Well, it's a little darker than I thought it was gonna be. And it is full, so that's good. So we'll get that front drain plug going. We'll get the filter off and complete out our oil change, but this is looking pretty normal. If you guys didn't believe me on how long it's been since this car has run, just check out, well, at least how long it's been since the oil's been changed, check out the old branding on the FL1A oil filter here. If that isn't dating the car, I don't know what is. Oh, look at that, we got our uh, nice ATI harmonic balancer. Look at the size of the crank pulley. I was, talk about an underdrive pulley, right? That is like the underdrive of underdrives. And one other thing that I saw, factory alternator bracket chopped off where the pollution pump area would be. So this is kind of keeping the theme of a lot of factory stuff, right? Probably due to the class that it was racing in. Here's a better look at some of the wiring. Like I said, all the lights and all that stuff still work in the car, but things just tucked up out of the way. The old Eibach uh, drag springs, if I remember correctly, the blue. There's those Lakewoods, the skinny rotors, our manual steering rack, all of the race car goodies. Okay guys, I am no transmission expert, but this kind of looks like an AOD with a little sump on it here and a uh, drain port, if you will. I could be completely wrong with that assumption because I don't know shit about automatic transmissions, but the old metric pan cover and it kind of, right, looks like it's following the contours. So, um, who knows what stalls in it, but maybe this bitch is built out. Who knows? Well, change is done. And one thing that I wanted to point out, this car actually doesn't even have a dipstick on it. And probably for the reason, as mentioned before, they probably change the oil so often with all the racing that they were probably like, you know what? We just put in what we need, race it a little bit, and then do an oil change. So um, interesting little tidbit there. So managed to get all the oil in, suck going through that small funnel, but it is what it is. Um, now probably get a jumper box um, going over here and start going through a little bit of wiring and see if you know things are going to do what they should do and in fact i probably do want to pull that distributor out and um we'll uh we'll hit the oil pump with a quarter inch socket and just get some oil going through the motor before we start doing any weird you know um, attempts to fire this thing up. I've actually got the old corded DeWalt. <laughs> My drill is at the commercial shop. Just 
guy's gonna have more torque anyway. So we actually wanna go counterclockwise, that's clockwise. There we go. And again, that's a quarter inch socket that uh, we wanna spin counterclockwise. See how it died right down there? That's the pump started pumping oil. See how the socket's coated in oil? That means we've done our job. So you know, I did that for a good 30, 45 seconds. Shiny again. Same thing with the points on the inside, contacts. So that's fuel. We don't know what's going on in here. We'll be pouring some fuel down the carburetor for now to see if uh, things will work. We've got our oil changed. We've got oil primed through the motor uh, or pump primed. That's interesting. Oh, I get it. To keep that from uh, rubbing against the uh, tensioner pulley there. Um, contacts clean in the distributor. So now let's get some power to the car and go over a few things. And let's see if we have power to the coil. That's going to be like the number one thing. And some interesting stuff over here. I don't... Almost looks like a newer style GM connector. I don't know why that's in here, but it is. Um, got a fan relay here. There's another relay there. I don't know, guys. Let's uh, let's get the power to it and see what's going on. From the ground and power to power. Okay, power. So, look at that. Both doors lock and unlock. As advertised. Oh, what did I do? Glove box light works. So I know we got power inside the car. So we got power inside the car. Tail lights work. Headlights work. Okay, we're ahead of the game here. I definitely do not hear a fuel pump. Nothing. Nothing. Electric fan. Positive, positive ignition. Oh, well, isn't that lovely? There's a coil positive there. Let me get the test light. I have a feeling. Somebody might have disconnected a wire. That's uh, pretty critical. Tack signal. Okay, so that's, oh, look at this, distributor. Why is distributor negative, unplugged? And where the hell would it go? Oh, look at this. Bowman Engineering. Well, as the GoPro battery died and I got no further ahead. Um, you know, we got some power down at that board down there and we are not getting power anywhere near the coil or the MSD box or anything like that. I think that that jumper cable plays a huge important role. Maybe that was somebody's like anti-theft, you know, I leave this off and nobody's gonna know where to hook it up so they can't start the car. And uh, we're just gonna have to chase some wires. Like it doesn't take much guys, we're carbureted here. And uh, I even had the fuel jug out. You know, I was really hopeful that I could pour some fuel down the carburetor and we'd have spark, but we don't even have spark. So with no spark, it's not even worth our breath trying to waste any fuel. So I am 
Gonna get some dinner and get ready for the members live. For uh, any of you guys interested, I do have a members only side to YouTube where I do um, members live only videos, usually once a month, I'm trying to up that. And um, you guys get some other perks, get to watch videos uh, before they get released to the general public. And um, usually do some giveaways and stuff like that, so on and so forth. So until we continue this video, hopefully we can get this beast running. Hopefully it'll be sunny and I can wash it and we can see what this thing looks like all cleaned up and out in the sun. So stick around. All right, next day here, and while I was waiting for FedEx to show up before I head to the commercial shop, I did unbolt the one bolt that was holding the passenger seat in and also this plate, distribution plate here with a bunch of the wiring. So I was kind of looking this over. This wire labeled one makes me a little suspect. It's like, it's the one that's keeping this car from running, right? And I did a little bit of investigation over here. So we got two switches. This one is actually tied to ignition. And I'm not sure why it would be a temporary push button because it's going into the 7AL. All the wiring up in here, I did find, we know this is the electric fan. And when I pulled this plate forward, this guy, seemed like it was not connected and i feel like one of these has to be the fuel pump so i'm just gonna go out on a limb and uh, i'm gonna hook this so i'm gonna go out on a limb i'm gonna hook this guy up and it is daisy chained over to this other red switch so there we go so here's the pause to pause and to be honest i kind of feel like the one, the one probably needs power for something. I just don't know where the one goes, but it doesn't have anything on the other side. Let's see if these switches do anything now. Fan. doesn't do anything. That one really doesn't seem to be doing anything. I did find the wire going to the fuel pump here. So that is sorted out. But let's just do some poking here. Outputs of the MSD box are in fact correct. All the car needed was a coil. Coil was bad. So, um, interesting. Let's, uh, let's go get some more fuel. You can actually hear the coolant moving around in the motor. Of course my booster pack is dead well we know that this car is ready to fire up um, it's windier than I would like I don't want the hood blowing up and getting out of the uh, the rod here and smashing cowls or anything so we're gonna wait till the wind dies down I'm gonna try and get a battery in here that can actually hold a charge and um, maybe what I'll do is I'll actually try and get um, we need a more consistent way to feed this thing some fuel. So let's see, but it wants to fire. All it was was a bad coil and um, all the other wiring, um, even with that positive wire, who knows? Like we don't have a fuel pump and the fuel pump could be locked up. That's maybe why it doesn't want to engage. And the other switch was actually going to um, at least one of the wires down to this box down here. So, 
that uh, that kind of explains some of it. And again, it's carbureted, right? So really doesn't need much. As long as that coil and distributor are doing what it needs to do and it's getting fuel, she's gonna fire as she did.